Good afternoon. First, I want to thank you all for this opportunity to, to be here and, and speak with you, and as well as the fabulous lunch. That was great. Of course, I'm going to want to go to sleep now this afternoon, uh, but that was really, really good. Um, so, as Brad said, I am uh, Dwayne Sanders, and I work for Chestnut Health Systems. Um, I am the Associate Director of Housing Administration for the organization, which is a community mental health provider, mental health and substance abuse provider, um, in the central and southern regions of Illinois. Um, has anyone here heard of Chestnut Health Systems? Familiar? Well, okay, I see some of the not Okay, great, great. Um, we are about 700 employees strong between both regions of central and southern Illinois and about $40 million strong as a nonprofit organization. Um, we actually provide international employee assistance programs um, through major corporations, so that's the mainstay of our, um, of our funding. Uh, but we do have multiple state and federal contracts to provide mental health and substance abuse services. Um, so that's who pays me 40 hours a week, uh, Chestnut Health Systems, and we do a wide range of things, not only mental health, substance abuse, but in employee assistance programs, but within that context, um, we have about 260 units of supportive housing between St. Clair and Madison County um, where we provide housing for people with serious mental illness as well as um, who are homeless. Most of our housing is homeless housing, but all of our housing is supported housing, which means we provide some level of service, whatever that individual needs in order to maintain their housing. We're a strong believer that housing is a right. Um, and that it is the foundation on which people can grow to become productive citizens. Without that housing, if you can imagine, um, it's always a constant struggle um, and typically leading to nowhere. So we really put and invest a lot of energy and effort into housing people first and then helping them develop whatever skills they need to continue, as well as coping with their mental illness symptoms, um, um, working on the, their recovery from substance abuse. Um, so whatever that individual needs, we try to pro provide that support in order for them to be successful. Um, the other programs that we offer within Chestnut include an individualized placement service, which is like vocational services. So not only do we believe that housing is a, a fundamental foundation, the fundamental foundation to, for growth, but also employment. Um, and we do believe that each and every one of our individuals that we serve, no matter where they are in their mental illness or their substance abuse addiction, um, that they can work um, and that that makes a huge difference. So we put a lot of energy into preparing them for work, supporting them while they work. We even help them transition from one job to another or just leave a job. These things happen. So um, in addition to that, we provide psychiatric and counseling services to the general population not only those who um, have mental health or substance abuse diagnoses. Um, we also, I'm looking at some of the brochures that we've got a lot of programs. Um, we also have a new program called Medication Plus. Um, so I'm sure everyone here is familiar with the state budget deficit. Um, I think the last time I heard it was probably 14 billion, maybe 16 billion, somewhere in there. So today it might be 20 billion, who knows, right? Um, so as a result of that, unfortunately, those in the general population who need our services the most are those with no resources. Well, because of the way that things are with the state budget, we cannot provide services to people who need it the most. So if they don't have income, we struggle with, or better yet, they don't have Medicaid, some sort of permanent payer source for our services, we struggle with providing them those services. The general revenue fund of the state that used to exist prior to the budget deficit was the fund that helped support those individuals. Um, but this Medication Plus program, at least to the very minimum, provides psychiatric and medication services to people with no resources. So that's, that's extremely helpful. Um, there's only a few agencies in the area who are able to do that. Um, and if you can only imagine, we're inundated with people who are clamoring for those services. So that's Chestnut Health Systems. Just kind of gave you a, a broad stroke of it. Um, and we are, we have offices in Granite City 
And then we also have an office in Belleville. So we pretty much cover St. Clair and Madison counties. So the continuum of care, the Madison County continuum of care. Dave mentioned, I mean, uh, Brad mentioned that, and that's actually where I met Brad. He showed up one day at one of our uh, monthly meetings, and um, everybody there was just astounded that someone who worked with veterans actually came to our meeting. So we were really glad and embraced and welcomed, welcomed him to our meeting because we knew this was a population who needed our services. And the continuum of care basically is um, a collaboration of uh, homeless providers throughout the county. Continuums of care were are products of HUD's thinking, Housing and Urban, the Department of Housing and Urban Development. And basically what happens is um, there is funding that is available for homeless services through HUD, uh, federal dollars, these are through the McKinney-Vento Act, um, that generates money for communities to provide services to people who are facing or experiencing homelessness. Well, that money is actually coordinated by the continuums of care, which consists of those homeless providers. So basically, we coordinate and control how the money is spent that comes into the county for those homeless services. Continuums of care range from single county to, of course, multiple county um, to in or balance of state um, entities. We're fortunate in Madison County to be a single <coughs> county continuum, which means the money that comes into this county is specifically for this county and, and nowhere else. And not only that, the money that does come into the county is as a result of the county's need. Um, so that's really important, and we work very hard at making sure that those funds are, are appropriately um, dispersed and utilized in order to support people through homelessness. Um, so I'm actually the co-facilitator. This is my second year as a co-facilitator for the Madison County Continuum of Care. Um, we may have to ask Brad to do co-facilitating sometime in the future because he is also an executive committee member of the Continuum of Care and he does a fantastic job of uh, supporting the Continuum through all of its efforts. One of the primary things, well, I wouldn't say one of the primary, but one of the, the most exciting things I think, of course I would say that is that we do through the Continuum of Care is, the, is Project Homeless Connect. Has anyone ever heard of that, heard of the concept, heard of the idea? Of course Brad has. <laughs> okay, so Project Homeless Connect well, is an idea, it's an event actually, it's a one day event that was uh, initiated in San Francisco back in 2004. And basically the idea is that you bring together those that are experiencing and facing homelessness with homeless providers all in one spot for a one-stop shop experience where the idea is to connect these individuals in the services. So people are typically not homeless because they want to be. Although there are some people out there that actually have figured out how to be homeless and how to <coughs> live um, very resourcefully and you have to respect that um, on the streets. So what we have to do is we have to try to engage individuals. And given the fact that the economy is the way it is now, there are people facing homelessness today that have never dreamt of facing homelessness. And they have absolutely no idea what to do. You would think that the idea of homelessness is pretty clear cut. You don't have a roof over your head, you're homeless. A lot, there's a lot of different ideologies or definitions of homelessness. People have different ideas about what homeless is. Um, some people say that if you're a month away from, um, you know, short of paying your mortgage rent, those things that you're homeless. If you don't have six months saved up somewhere, then you could potentially be homeless. Um, of course, literally on the street in a shelter, um, that is considered homelessness or on a park bench under a biodop, etc. So what we, what we wanted to do in Madison County was bring these individuals together so that they could be connected into services and actually be lifted out of homelessness. So last year was our third year of providing these services, of, of, of having this event, Project Homeless Connect. And to date, we've done this since 2008, and to date we have served 233 individuals. We've connected them into 1,468 services, 
and there we pull this off by utilizing 387 um, volunteers. So this is a true grassroots event that pulls together um, the efforts of the entire community, and we bring these individuals together that day, and we basically pamper them. We allow them, or we provide them with haircuts. Um, we provide them with showers if they like. We wash their clothes for them. We provide them with a huge goodie bag of things that you might think someone may need if they're facing homelessness, such as a blanket and some warm socks and things of that nature, some canned foods. Um, and most importantly, though, we provide them a connection to see a doctor, to see a psychiatrist, um, to see a dentist, to see uh, hopefully get connected with the Secretary of State to get an identification card because um, that's oftentimes where it starts for people that are homeless. They have to get that ID in order to access other services. Um, so and then of course the ultimate idea is to house someone, uh, to provide that housing for someone and we've been able to do that over the last several years through this event. So we're actually gearing up now with typically the events have been in December because that is actually homeless month, or there's a week in December that's homelessness week. Um, although, you know, it doesn't happen just one week out of the year. Um, and so we've been doing it in December. Um, this year we're gonna actually change it and do it in January. So it'll be January 2012 for our next event. Um, many people, when I talk to groups like this, um, they're able to express that not only maybe possibly they've experienced homelessness before in their life, but that they at least know someone who has experienced homelessness. And I've experienced that same sense of people who have uh, struggled with mental illness and or substance abuse. If you haven't done it, you haven't had that issue yourself, you at least know someone or a family member that has. So we really encourage the entire community to come together um, and through Project Homeless Connect we've had Vendors such as Kraft, um, we've had uh, the Salvation Army, we've had uh, Urban League, we've had United uh, United Way uh, 211. We've had a lot of the community to come together and rally around this event, which makes a huge difference for those folks that we serve that particular day. Um, I actually brought a, a video, but I'm going to give it to Brad and maybe he can. Um, get it to you guys somehow, um, but it, it really does illustrate how the event goes. It also provides you some feedback from those who participate in the event and what it actually meant to them um, to come in and get a haircut. It's really interesting to see someone come through the door in the morning of that event, pretty disheveled, you know, having maybe come from, you know, sleeping under the tunnels down in Granite City. Um, <clears throat> And we're able to get them a shower, get them a fresh pair of clothes. We actually feed them also, um, and a haircut. And their entire attitude is completely different by the time they get ready to leave the event. It's almost like a brand new person. Um, and to experience that and to see that firsthand um, really makes a huge difference. So um, that is about all I had to provide for information I had to provide for you guys today. I do have up here for you some materials, some information related to Chestnut Health Systems. I also have a, a summary of uh, the last three years of our Project Homeless Connect event um, that's up here. And I also have a brochure of the Madison County Continuum of Care. Um, so I want to open the floor to any questions, any <coughs> comments. Um, you guys are a quiet group, at least Brad said you were. <laughs> yes. What's the homeless population in Madison County now, and out of those, how many are women and children? Ah. Um, one of the things that I, I wanted to grab today, and I just couldn't get my hands on it quick enough, was um, our most recent point in time count. Okay, so through the continuum of care, HUD requires that every year, the last 10 days of January, we count those that are homeless in our county. And that count is part of the equation that generates the, the dollar amount of, of our appropriation, okay? So this last, um, uh, the last point in time count that was done in January, and we just recently released those results back in April at our annual meeting, 
Um, and so don't quote me, but I think we were roughly around, we had identified a roughly around 400, close to 400 individuals who were facing homelessness on that one night, mm -hmm. okay? And, and keep in mind, the point in time count is not the most efficient way to determine how many people you actually have in your county that are homeless or in your continuum that, is, that are homeless. But this is HUD's best way to do it. I totally disagree, but you know, you, you got to go with the funder, right? And so uh, there was a significant portion of those individuals that were families, um, that were women with children, um, as well as kind of surprisingly, well, yeah, so surprisingly for this year was that there was an increase in the number of children, youth, that were actually homeless. Um, so uh, what has happened in most communities is that we have gotten so good at solving homelessness on a temporary basis for people. In other words, we don't see those individuals on the street anymore. We figured out how to get them off the street, but that doesn't mean that they're then housed. They're still homeless, we just don't see them. And I actually had a uh, chief of Centralia Police tell me that once, about six or seven years ago, and he said, the only thing that we've done is we figured out how to keep them out of the public sight, but we have not resolved the issue. So that's a great, great question. Um, but the point in time count is not the, the clearest way, it's, it's the only way that HUD requires us to report that, but thanks for asking. And so part of the reason why we, the rationale for moving the event Project Homeless Connect event from December to January is so that we can do the point in time count at the same time as Project Homeless Connect. So we're trying to figure this out. So, great. Brad, you had a question? I was just going to point out if you could talk about the, the gift donation that, the, that came to you at the. <laughs> yeah, at, um, so Project Homeless <coughs> Connect, the first year we actually held it in Maryville. Chestnut Health Systems has a residential facility for adolescents struggling with substance abuse addiction um, in Maryville that has a huge gym. So that's where we had our first event. Last several years, we've actually held the event at the Salvation Army in Alton. I don't know if anyone is familiar with that, um, on Albee Street. And so this year, um, I had invited one of the um, landlords that we work with, um, that Chestnut works with, and I just invited him, and he's actually a group, it's a JRG Holdings of Belleville, and they're a property, uh, property management um, corporation. And I just invited them um, to participate that day. I wanted them to come out, volunteer, because they provide some housing to the people that we serve. And so they came out, and they really enjoyed the event. And the, before they left that day, they handed me um, $10,000 in cash as a donation to Project Homeless Connect, which of course, you know, I almost fell over with that cash and I'm thinking, okay, what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> I didn't want to even walk out the door with it. Fortunately, the Salvation Army had a safe and we were able to put it in the safe, but it was, it was an extreme, it was a huge surprise, but it's going to allow us to um, provide this event for many years to come, um, as well as <coughs> make it what we really need it to be for the people that we serve. Um, you know, transportation is always a huge issue and particularly um, on, in the Metro East because the communities are so spread out. Um, so that's one thing that I know that we're going to invest in to help increase our participation and make sure we get people there that day for the event. Um, but it was a huge shocker. I, I, I didn't expect it at all. And, so those are the, the types of surprises that we all love, right? <laughs> Any other questions, comments? Again, I want to thank you all. And if you think of anything, you can always ask Brad. If you know of anyone who is in need of housing, who may be in need of mental health or substance abuse services, family, friends, church members, neighbors, um, I also have uh, left my card up here. Please. Be, uh, please take one of those and just give me a call if you want to kind of talk about somebody that you might know that might need some help, um, and I'll be more than help, more than happy to help out. Thank you guys so much.